Okay, hi everyone. Uh, like um, like Karen said, I'm giving this talk on behalf of Riva, who's a wonderful member of our team but couldn't make it out tonight. And I'm here to tell you all why uh, open source is so important in AI, and we need to do everything we can to stick behind it and defend it, even when the big models are big and scary. So I don't know if you've all heard about OSI, uh, the their open source initiative who kind of write definitions of what open source is, you know, licenses that people can use, and how to share information uh, in the open source world, mostly about code. They've been working on uh, definitions for open source models for, I think, a couple of years now, uh, and they're really trying to standardize. Like, what does it mean to have a model be open source? You know, how do we define one as such? Because there's so many different aspects to it, um, and we are still really early. They are in draft mode. I'm gonna fix your screen for you. Oh, is it broken? Ah, thank you. Uh, the standard's still in draft mode. We are still really early. They have spent years on it, and they can't come to a consensus on what an open source model is, or what open source AI is in general. Where's my mouse? So, um, there's a bunch of elements that they have decided on, and again, this is still in draft mode, but there's many different kind of open source models, right? Uh, an open source model is uh, an AI system that gives people the freedoms to use the system, to study it, you know, to understand it for interpretability, uh, to modify it, right? A license to look at the model, to mess with it, to further pre-train it, to fine tune it, to use it for any purposes you see fit, to fuse it and make multimodal stuff, uh, and to share it with others, you know? No, um, no limitations on distribution and what you can use these models for. And so there's so many parts of this, right? This could be checkpoints of your model while it was being pre-trained. This could be pre-training data. This could be something as simple as just open weights at the end of it. And right now, our definitions of open source models, you know, everyone kind of has a different idea of what open source truly means. And so it feels like in today's AI landscape, there is no truly closed source model. There's only degrees of openness because we are on the, the frontier of building these models. Uh, there's no standardization for what an open source model is. So we are all trying to find a definition that fits our own use cases. So, you know, if you look at a model that anyone can infer, it's free, but you don't have the access to, access to the weights, but you can train on its output, that's open in a way. If you have a model where you have access to the weights, but not the training data, that's open in a way. If you have model, a model where you have access to all of the pre-training data, but not the architecture itself, that's open in a way. And so, when you go on archive, when you go on people's GitHub repos, and you get these open source models, uh, each one is very different in the degrees to which it is open source, yet we still call them open source. And today we have a lot of uh, proposed regulation for regulating open source models. It's too early. Why are we trying to regulate something we don't even know what it is, right? How can we regulate an open source model when we haven't even decided what open source means. And we're on the frontier, right? We are all building these things out in the open. We are still in the, in the baby days of modern machine learning. You know, things have been on an accelerated curve since the 50s, the 60s, and things paused for many decades. And just now, we're starting to see the potential of what these things can be. So we are very early in trying to legislate these things, to regulate these models. In a world where, you know, maybe you have 10 to the 26 floating point operations worth of compute at your house, I don't know any of you, maybe you do, it's possible that you could run afoul of some upcoming potential regulations for just for building a tool you wanna to give to the community. Are these models dangerous? Can these models cause safety issues? It's too early to regulate them. We are still in the baby days. How can we regulate things? How can the non-technical bureaucrats try to regulate these things if we don't even know what they are? What is an open source model? If you ask any lawmaker working on any AI regulation bill what an open source model is and why they want to regulate open source, they couldn't tell you. They couldn't tell you, oh, it's open weights, oh, it's training data, oh, it's model architectures, oh, it's the paper. It doesn't work. So closed source, you know, in terms of any large lab is the norm. Most people don't release 
any sort of thing about their model except for maybe the ability to infer it, right? All these large labs give you an API endpoint if you're lucky. If not, you have to sign an NDA to use them. And leaks are also a norm. There's been news articles about many an AI lab uh, having internal security vulnerabilities that could have resulted in uh, any individual gaining access to the weights of a modern frontier language model that belongs to a closed source lab. It doesn't matter if your model's closed source, anyone will be able to get their hands on it eventually because humans are always gonna be a vulnerability. Why regulate models in such a way that you ban the ability for people to share and create community models when these open models if they are so dangerous, sorry, when these closed models, which could be so dangerous, are still gonna be accessible to someone at some point. They're gonna be leaked. They're gonna make it out to the public. <laughs> if we saw the weights, we could beat this thing. <laughs> So this is a quote from MIT Tech Review. Until the tech industry has settled on a definition, powerful companies can easily bend the concept to suit their own needs, and it could become a tool to entrench the dominance of today's leading players. Uh, I strongly believe that open source models uh, in such a way that everything is able to be shared with the community, that anyone can replicate them at home, that anyone can analyze and interpret them, are essential to not just safety, but the future of the space in that while closed models are, are powerful and useful and you know, should exist for corporate reasons, there, there's reasons you know, people need to make money, um, it's important not to let open source fall aside. And we all need to be able to use these public goods and to keep creating them and publishing them. And of course, one of the big arguments uh, against uh, open source AI in general from large corporations is to help them capture shares of the market, right? Uh, open source models are a threat to people who build closed source models because, you know, when we catch up, and we're really not that far, the moat really isn't that big. When we catch up, in the blink of an eye, um, it, it provides a, a threat to these, to these businesses. And so, of course, a corporation is it's in their interest to argue against the existence of open source models, to argue for regulations that prevent these models from existing, which is why it's so important that we need to fight for the right to keep these models existing, to be able to publish our research, to be able to publish our data sets and our results and our weights, so that a couple corporations don't end up with all the power. And like I said a couple slides ago, uh, it doesn't matter if your model is closed source and secret, it's gonna get leaked. Things always get leaked. <laughs> Only law-abiding citizens respect laws. It doesn't matter if safety is written into law because someone's gonna jailbreak your model, right? Every model is intrinsically jail jailbreakable, as you heard eight minutes ago. Uh, and only people who care about the laws are going to follow these safety guidelines. So open source models bring everyone to a level playing field. They bring everyone the same uh, ability to inspect models, to interpret them, to understand them, and to potentially combat them. If there are safety issues, what are we supposed to do if the models are closed and completely opaque, and we have no ability to understand or fight back against the capabilities these models might have? <laughs> do you hate Trump? What happens if he wins? How is he gonna regulate AI? What's he gonna do to it? Do you hate Kamala? <laughs> what are you gonna do if she wins? What are you gonna do when she regulates AI? It doesn't matter who is in power? Because you know, every four years, I'm Canadian, so I don't really know how American politics work. <laughs> but like, I think it's every four years, it can change. And you have term limits, right? We don't have those in Canada. <laughs> every eight years, guaranteed, you have someone else in power. Who do you trust with controlling truth? I understand that you know, some people may believe the government is benevolent, but do you believe every government is benevolent? Do you believe the government you're gonna have in 15 years is benevolent? Do you trust them with controlling truth, with setting laws to regulate models, to ban open source models if your computer is too powerful, to make it so you have to have a government liaison, a third party auditing your models for safety that's in bed with the government? It doesn't matter who's in power because eventually it's gonna come back to bite you. So centralized AI uh, concentrates power in the hands of few, and it's dangerous. We need 
something like distributed training in order to have a world free of bad actors, in order to have a world where the people have some hand in controlling the future, and it's not just a couple companies in bed with the government. Open source is amazing. Open source is built, I don't know how many of you have seen the XKCD comic saying that the world's infrastructure is built on one developer from Nebraska thanklessly maintaining open source infrastructure for 30 years. It's true, it's true everywhere. It's true in open source. It's people donating their time. And this is the foundation of what we can build. Open source research pushes all of us forward. The closed labs as well. Where would we be without open source? It's worth economically, an, an, well, I was gonna say an uncountable amount, but there's the number right there. Uh, <laughs> 8.8 trillion dollars on the demand side. Open source is work that we do for pennies on the dollar that helps out everyone, both corporations and us as individuals. And we need to make sure it stays possible. So open source provides, you know, again, the ability for people to see how the model works and to work with these systems deeply as, as they are and not just how they're presented to us, which lets people find vulnerabilities, which lets people conduct security research, which lets people conduct safety research, which lets us find ways to jailbreak them in ways that maybe only a dedicated attacker with much more resources than your average person would normally, which means we can work on improving these systems. We can work on collaboratively creating a better world of open source models and a better world of closed source models too, on top of that. Here's a quote from Project Zero that Linux developers patch security holes faster than everyone else, and I don't know anyone who gets paid less than Linux developers. Um, <laughs> when we talk about safety <laughs> and bioweapons and bombs, how many of you, okay, you don't have to put your hands up, but how many of you own a copy of the Anarchist Cookbook? Like, it's not, I said you don't have to. I'm, I'm writing your names down. Uh, <laughs> it's really easy. All of this information is out there on the internet. All of this information is, is publicly accessible already. These models are not making anything possible that wasn't previously possible. Then you have, you know, the information to do this is not the hard part to access. The hard part's actually doing it. Uh, there's a quote from California's proposed bill, SB 1047, <laughs> which says that, uh, AI will let us make biological, chemical, and nuclear weapons. Like, I don't know how many of you have the lab set up to make biological weapons, but if you do, that's the hard part. It's not getting the recipe. The recipe's out there. You can Google it and find it. Uh, this is a quote from Anselm uh, Levskaya from, from DeepMind, uh, who says, there's a conceit among those who have only ever worked with computers that the world is amenable to prediction and that intelligence can elide the need for hard work. I don't have a biology lab in my basement. I don't have the resources to build nuclear weapons. A model is not gonna change that. Yeah, and language models won't create bioterrorists any more readily than celebrity cookbooks have created Michelin star chefs. <laughs> the recipe isn't the important part. It's getting down and trying to do the work. And an open model is not gonna cause any more bioterrorism attacks than a book on bioterrorism would. Those aren't illegal. They're everywhere, go to your library. Um, and yeah, so another, another quote from the, the same person from DeepMind is that there is no such data on how to do, uh, I'll just go back real quick, um, to assemble an Ebola virus, let alone a smallpox genome. You can have the instructions. It doesn't get you anywhere if you don't have the, the knowledge, the experience, and the resources to do these things, which AI can provide none of in its current state. <laughs> How would the world look if you needed a license to do advanced mathematics? Uh, again, I'm Canadian, but from my recollection, the US government tried to do this back in the, what was it, the 50s, the 60s, when they tried to ban encryption algorithms uh, and consider their export as weapons export. It didn't work. You can't, sorry? The 90s, thank you. Um, yeah, if you need a license to do advanced math, to do cryptography, or to use the internet. These tools do not enable you to do harm. It's the, the skill and the intent to do harm which takes you there. And there's a, <laughs> imagine we were banned from doing calculus because it was too dangerous. <laughs> so the, the view that open models are more dangerous to society than large closed source models is 
in my opinion, and Reva's opinion, uh, a Luddite view, in that we're trying to stop technological progress because we're scared of it, because maybe these regulators don't understand it, because someone's whispering in their ear. It's crucial to have open models exist, to continue to exist, and to be allowed to, to research and to create and to share publicly. Because as soon as the information gets in the hands of just a few and not the many, we lose the ability for interpretability, for safety, and for community power. And it takes it, takes it away from us, the people. And this is uh, one of my favorite points uh, that Karen made uh, to the whole company a while ago, which is that what if only a few people had access to Photoshop? You could put anything as admissible evidence in court. If other people didn't have the foggiest idea of what was possible, you could do anything. If, if only people, only a few people had access to video models, to large language models, the power that it concentrates in the hands of the few is so incredibly massive. And the only way to combat that power, because large, large labs are gonna continue accumulating this power, are gonna continue augmented capabilities, the only way to stay at par with that is to put this power back in the hands of the people and to have open models and access for everybody. And closed source should exist. Again, people need to make money. There's nothing wrong with closed source. But the point is that everyone should have the ability to create open models, to share them, to share research, and to continue working on them no matter how many floating point operations it may take to train them. So, not quite a call to action, but if you have a government official in your riding who is pushing against the ability for open models to exist and is trying to put constraints on open models in such a way that it makes them so much harder to create than the big closed source ones, give them a call. You have a lot of power. We have a lot of power as a community, and we need to make sure that power stays in the hands of the people. Thank you.